Today I'm going to show you guys how I like to make some of the rebars for the various types of freight cars, including the newly released Finger Rack flat car from Scale Trains. There are several ready to run loads that are produced, but at the current time of producing this video they're all sold out, so we're going to have to make our own. We'll start by going over some background knowledge of rebar transported by rail, then we'll do a quick overview of the modeling materials you'll need to replicate this load, and then finally we'll build one together. Rebar is a steel bar or wire that is commonly used as a reinforcing material in concrete for construction purposes. Rebar comes in a variety of sizes ranging from less than a half inch wide to over two inch diameter steel bars. The length of the rebar can also vary greatly with the sizes ranging from 20 feet up and over 60 feet depending on the customer's needs. Rebar is generally transported in bundles of 15 to 25 pieces that are wrapped together and then these bundles are transported in groups of 15 to 25 bundles as well. To help narrow down the most common types of rebar loads, we can use prototype photos to help us. If we take a look at this photo, we can see the length of this car is the Bethlehem Steel Corp 68 foot finger rack flat car and the car length is 68 feet. With the rebar it loads close to a full length minus a few feet on the other side, so we can assume the length of this rebar needs to be 60 feet. When this is scaled down to HO scale, this equates to 8.25 inches, so our rebar pieces will need to be cut to that dimension. The diameter of the rebar piece is a little bit more difficult to get an exact measurement, so we'll have to take a modeler's license to use whatever rebar looks good. The common rebar that is used in building roads, bridges, and other heavy duty construction is number 11, or 1.4 inch diameter bars. 1.4 inches in HO scale is approximately 16 thousandths of an inch, which is the same size as a 27 gauge wire. 27 gauge wire is not the most common standard wire size, and more popular sizes include even number wires like 24, 26, 28, or 30. The difference in sizes between a 27 and 26, or a 27 and 28, is almost two thousandths of an inch, so there shouldn't be any noticeable size differences. Therefore, when we try to find something that matches the rebar loads, we should look for about 26 gauge wire or 16 thousandths of an inch. There are several options to consider when trying to replicate the rebar in scale form. Some of the options I considered were styrene, brass wire, and music or steel wire. Now for the prototype load, there is approximately 20 pieces per bundle with 20 bundles per car load. So we need about 400 pieces of rebar at 8.25 inches or about 333 inches of product is needed per car load. Due to the large number of pieces, cost is a large consideration when selecting the correct product. I initially thought styrene was the best choice, as plastic is usually easily to work with and generally pretty cheap. One of the limitations with the styrene though is it does need to be painted to match the steel finish. The small rod that I found in styrene was about 20 thousandths wide, so a little bit bigger than what I needed, but still reasonably sized. The main issue is that the rods come in 14 inch lengths, so you can only get one piece of rebar from each piece, so you'll need to purchase 400 pieces of styrene. Each package comes with 10 pieces at $3 per package, so this rebar load would have cost about $120 for just styrene. Brass wire was another good option as this is easily workable and another good metal product, but would still need to be painted and ended up being just as expensive as styrene. I found that music or steel wire would be the best choice because the product is a little bit more difficult than the other options, but is still workable and is already steel colored. The cheapest option to buy is in coils, but require to straighten the wire off the coil. And at this diameter, it can be difficult as the wire is easily bent. Buying wire in straight is another option and can be bought 26 gauge wire in three foot lengths. This wasn't too expensive, but still found the rebar load would cost about $40. After researching for a little bit, I found a straight wire from a shipping supply company comes in the form of tag wire, used for little paper tags for inventory purposes, that comes in packs of 1,000 pieces for approximately $10. That means I could produce rebar pieces for about one penny per piece, significantly cheaper than any other, other options. As for the total materials needed, we just talked about the tag wire pieces needed, but a smaller gauge wire is also needed for bundling the rebar pieces. I found a 28 gauge black painted copper wire is a good option, mostly used in jewelry and commonly called beading wire. I also used a small piece of styrene tubing to help gauge how long the tag wire needed to be cut for efficiency. Other materials used for the rebar was 1 16th by 1 16th inch balsa wood cut into 1.5 inch lengths. For each load I used about 10 to 12 pieces. 1 16th inch black striping tape to be used for banding the loads. And then for the tools I used, I use various nippers or side cutters. I use small 
ones for clipping the 28 gauge wire and large snippers for cutting the rebar and i'll go into more detail on this later needle nose pliers were also very helpful and various modeling tools like exacto knives tweezers and machinist squares for weighing down the blocks and then finally i super glued and used gorilla glue to assemble the loads now for actually building the load first thing we're going to do is create a template to cut all the tag wire at the same length we're going to take our piece of styrene tubing and cut it at 8.25 inches or 60 feet in real scale once we get the styrene tubing template, we can start cutting all the tag wire, and this is the tedious part of building the load. I would recommend turning on a TV show or something to watch and just working through it. I'd say it took about 10 to 15 minutes for me to cut all 1,000 pieces. The steel wire is cuttable with most nippers, but I would recommend getting a little bit heavy duty or one to help cut through the pieces. I would usually grab about five to eight pieces and cut them all at once. Any more than about eight pieces and get really tough to cut. And then anything less than that, it would just take forever to actually work through all 1,000 pieces. Once you have a good supply of cut tag wire, you can start assembling the bundles. I found that 20-piece bundles looked the best, but 15-piece bundles also looked good. I'd recommend doing the 15-piece bundles if you want to stack the rebar bundles over three high to reduce weight and volume of the load. Once you've got your 20 pieces count out, I'm going to cut four 1-inch pieces of 28-gauge wire that's going to be used for wrapping the bundles. The length of these doesn't matter too much as the majority of this will be cut away and the length of the wire is only there for the ease of handling. I like to orientate the bundle wrap so that there's two between the finger racks and two on the outside of the finger racks. So about a half inch from the end or about 2.5 inches from the ends for the middle pieces. I start with one of the middle wraps and wrap it around and begin to twist the black wire. The tighter you're able to keep the bundle, the more secure it will be. After one of the middle ones, it doesn't matter which ones you continue on with, but I found it's easier to go with the middle one, do the two outer ones, and then finish with that other middle one. Like I said, the tighter the twist tie is, the more secure and better look the bundle will be. This does take time to kind of hone your skill, and you'll probably have to redo this several times. And if you don't have a lot of finger dexterity, you can use needle nose pliers. But the 28 gauge wire is small and can break under a little amount of stress, so I found it. I often broke them with the needle on those pliers, but it is an option if you need it. After all the twists are twisted, you'll be left with some pigtails that need to be cut off. For these, I would use recommend a smaller nipper and position the cutters at about the two to three twists. This allows the bundle to remain secure, but minimizes the length of the pigtail for realistic wrapping. When I go about this, I did accidentally break about two or three per carload, so it just requires you to rewrap it and cut it off again. After the bundle is secure, I then place the bundle on the finger rack and make sure that the twist tie is not sitting on in a weird spot. I try to avoid it being too close to the actual finger racks and like having the twist tie between the two channel supports. Once you've gotten down a good technique, it only takes about a minute or two to actually finish each bundle. Once I've finished about 15 to 20 bundles, it's time to actually start assembling the load. If you're building this car for a finger rack, then I would actually recommend using the actual car to help build the load. But this is slightly risky as the bonding medium is super glue and can easily damage painted models, so extreme care is needed. I found that the gel super glue works a little bit better compared to regular super glue, as the liquid super glue kind of drains into the bundles or gets soaked into the wood, so the gel performs a little bit better and has a little bit better grip. I position all five of the bundles onto the car and try my best to hide the little twist ties, either position them so they're facing the interior of the car or facing downwards and are difficult to see from viewing angles. I also try to use a flat edge to ensure all the bundles are at the approximately the same point on the car. Once all the bundles are in the correct orientation, I then begin to glue the piece of balsa wood by running a bead of glue down one side and placing it on the racks. I sometimes have to push the wood divider down a bit so it makes contact with all five bundles. The position of the wood dividers is dependent on the prototype photos but it's usually two on either side of the finger rack and then one to two in the middle of the load so for a total of five to six wood pieces per bundle layer. I did two different versions of the rebar loads and found that the six wood version looked a little bit better in my opinion, but it's all dependent on the prototype photo that you used. It seems that they put the wooden blocks directly over the support channel, so I tried my best to replicate that. Working with the super glue can be a little bit tough as you usually only have a few seconds to make adjustments and it bites relatively quickly. I also took care to make sure the bundles looked nice and were perpendicular to the car body lengthwise and did not overextend past the car body sides. Once the glue had set, I then followed up with a smaller dab of Gorilla Glue for a second layer of bonding. 
After all five wood blocks are down, it's time to add a second layer of rebar, and this time I glue each wood block and then position a rebar bundle one at a time. I repeat this for each bundle and try to keep the bundles centered between the racks as much as possible to leave wiggle room. At this point, I would also recommend removing the load from the car body and continuing on without the car for the risk of damage. After a little bit of drying time, I once again get my wood block dividers and begin to glue them down on top of the bundles, trying my best to match the previous wooden block's locations. This process continues on until you're happy with the size of the car load. I then gave the load about a day to dry to make sure all the glue had properly bonded and added glue as needed if the bundles were not secure. The last major step is to band the entire load so that the pieces don't fly under extreme lateral loads. I found striping tape would work really well for this and chose black as my color, but white, yellow, or other colors would work well too. Similar to the wood bundles, the striping is a paste off the prototype photos. I thought five stripes looked the best when comparing the two loads, but for this video I only did four. I started at the bottom of the load, which should be easier to tell if you oriented your bundles so that the twist ties are hidden underneath and placing the striping tape on a third bundle and beginning to wrap the load. I tried my best to keep it as straight as possible and just do one complete wrap around the load. I cut the tape such that it overlaps the middle two bundles for some added strength. You can orientate it such that the striping tape laps right over the initial piece, but that didn't bother me very much as this piece would be hidden. I continued this for all three spots and the load was finished. Overall, I thought this was a fairly easy project to do and just adds a whole nother layer of realism to my layout and honestly just looks really good. I was actually getting pretty excited towards the end of this project of just how good it was looking and how nicely it was coming out and for how cheap it was actually to reproduce it. Plus the best part of this is you just don't have to use this just for the finger rack loads. This can be used on a variety of other applications like bulkhead flat cars, gondolas, 89 foot flat cars, or even like tractor trailers. These exact bundles did not fit in my other gondolas, but fit very nicely on my exact girl 67 foot bulkhead flat car and can be easily modified to fit other gondolas. Another aspect I didn't really touch on was painting the rebar loads as this is a little bit more involved. I haven't found a very good method for actually painting the rebar as it requires two to three coats of paint and requires you to retwist the twist ties for the bundle wires. I also personally like the natural look of the steel from the tag wire and thinks it looks really good as well. I do know some of the rebar is shipped with a green protective coating and that's something that would be cool to reproduce and I'm currently working on it but just haven't found a good way to do it efficiently. One other aspect of this load is the weight of the bundles is pretty significant either for the good or the bad. The weight of either load is approximately 145 grams or 5.2 ounces which is essentially the weight of another freight car. Now that could be good for some underweight cars, but it could be an issue for others. For example, the My Bulkhead flat car, which can fit up to seven layers of rebar bundles, could only fit four before it started scraping on the car body. So what's the cost of this project? Buying bulk helps a lot to reduce the cost, but in general, the costs are pretty low. The major cost is the tag wire at about $3 per car load. The twist twice is also pretty cheap at a dollar per load. The balsa wood is extremely cheap and takes about 25 cents worth of wood. And the use of the super glue was about a dollar or two, depending on how much you can get out of it. So in the end, it costs about $6 per car load and a few hours to build. Once you kind of have honed your skill, you can really get into the production style work and really reduce production times and buying in bulk can help as well. In the end, this is a pretty easy build and I would definitely recommend you guys trying it out, especially if those ready to run style kits aren't available. And I think they look amazing on the cars or trackside scenery detail. I'm currently working on the painted version, like I said, so keep on the lookout for those and tell me what you guys think. If this is something you guys would want to see more of, some more prototype load videos, or if you guys want to see some other stuff. So tell me what you guys think. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.